And this is Denmark. As you might see or don't see, understand or don't understand. Doesn't the picture speak uh, clearly about it? Oh yeah. How different is this from Sweden? Mm, probably it's more southern. Yeah, the trees. But that's it. Yeah, slightly different. Houses are different though. I can't explain it from this picture, but the houses are more European continental. Like the Netherlands, even Britain or Germany. Yep. I'm I'm only 2k away from uh, my guest house. So let's see what is this all about. Here I had to reorganize and think about where to sleep. Will it be easy as Sweden? This doubt pushed me to book the first accommodation of the trip. I have found a guest house, but quite an expensive one. There was nothing cheaper on site, and all I wanted was to charge all my devices and have a proper warm shower. I'm leaving the guest house where I was near Copenhagen, north of Copenhagen. This is my, was my first night indoor and uh, it was okay but the service wasn't and the price neither but okay I will try to reduce similar mistakes. Hello Denmark! Uh, yeah I am uh, ready even though I have no idea where to go. Uh, not having a destination is uh, somehow free. It's like a free roaming. But uh, it's not, not totally positive. As if you don't have a destination, you don't have a goal. And you are not motivated by reaching that goal. So you wake up in the morning and you have to schedule your day and you opt for numerous solutions and it seems that uh, it seems that um, I cannot come with a decision. So the decision for me was like uh, I mean I tell you with, with the camera, right? Right. So should I visit a contemporary art museum nearby here or heading to the city center of Copenhagen which is 36k from here well it's gonna be rainy today uh, I want to check the museum first catch the feeling if I can leave my bicycle um, secure and safe uh, I'll probably visit this museum and, and like paying this 22 euro fee <laughs> for entering entrance and uh, I'll stay there three four hours three hours probably need some lunch and then I'll uh, I'll head south to see to visit Copenhagen which is probably also the place where I'll set up for the night and I have no idea where to sleep when in Copenhagen like in which park, in which place
we're coming to a museum uh, with the bikepacking assets wasn't the perfect solution isn't ideal i had to leave the sleeping bag the frame bag the saddle bag even though the saddle bag was empty as i took off the dry bag inside so it's not easy to uh, just get like dismount the four panniers and uh, put it in a locker inside the museum. I had to take several different parts um, that and put it in a, in a lockers and um, and I had to leave some precious components components as you can see they were attached and for a couple of hours they were outside under the rain so in case of thieves um, this bikepacking solution isn't the best for for sightseeing um, even though yeah i would say is the best for road cycling and mountain biking like for gravel ride for gravel riding but if you are planning to like hop on and off museums shops and hotels probably the best way is to have um, the classic panniers bags um, they are easy to extract you just lift them you take them with you and you bring them up to the hotel here there is always something that uh, will be left attached to your bicycle so in safe countries it's okay otherwise it is not Copenhagen now I have several options and I don't know which one to take meaning I don't know if heading south to Germany um, heading uh, west to the Netherlands for example or um, east to, to Poland and uh, it, it really plays a big difference whether I choose one or the other to me. It's a big decision. I, I'm like on a crossroad. What I wanted to say is that uh, um, leave your home with a plan. It doesn't have to be 100% uh, bomb-proof, strict inflexible plan but have a goal at least set a goal such as i want to reach the other coast or the other side of the country i want to reach the capital or i want to reach that geographical area or cross that mountain range because you will be more motivated and more focused uh, by leaving your by leaving your home. In my case, I don't. I had a goal to go as south as uh, Sweden as possible, but then at the end of Sweden, the option was, well, should I take the ferry and cross? And once in Denmark, what should I do now? Uh, it's not, a, it's not <clears throat> time for me to calculate my way back, but it's certainly time for me to ask, where do you want to go? And how do you want to get back? You see, yeah, someone could could call it this could call this freedom, but freedom should be within a certain path, a certain fences, a certain system of restriction. Too much freedom means what should I do today? <laughs> Which is not too good. I'm tempted to go south to Germany. Yeah, let's cycle to Germany. But now that I'm saying to you, to the camera, now I have to do it. I will cycle to Germany. Now I show you where I, sp I spent my night.
the landscape is reasonably flat, but less than I thought. It is windy, very exposed. This country seems to be in balance between land and water and is made up by several islands. It is quite a unique case in Europe. It is not surprising that sailing has always been a big thing here. That's the seaside of Copenhagen and it's my day nine. The sun comes and goes. It's pretty okay. Uh, I want to briefly um, enter the city. Probably get a few items, something to eat, uh, but to carry with me. Uh, and then I'll get out of town. So the plan is not to be a tourist. Big cities are time-wasting machines. They are full of interest and unless you are here for a special reason, big metropolitan areas should be simply avoided. That is what I usually do. I prefer to visit cities when I'm not by bike or when I know where to park and I have time to dedicate to the place. Getting through Copenhagen took me the most of the day and was very slow. So far I've seen seven bicycle shops, seven, <laughs> seven though, the only that I saw are seven. So you can imagine how many are <laughs> in town. are building a new bridge and I'm taking the, the old one. I was expecting more cyclists on this route, it's, let's say Germany to Denmark, but evidently not. The landscape is not as wooded as in Sweden, but here and there, there are shelters and possibility for us willing to rest outside. There is no risk of rain lately, but a shelter offers a full layer of protection against the night dew. Um, those shelters are for free, they belong to a school, but they advertise it as um, 
public for anyone who's who is in need for staying overnight uh, what do they offer well nothing really there is just a shelter which is good in case of rain it is not raining lately so i guess it's uh, it's a little bit more cozy and uh, and uh, less windy inside and um, the sun is not shining inside in fact in fact i overslept last night which is a bad mistake for us that we travel on bicycles waking up at night it is not <laughs> It is not the way we, we travel. It's very late, waking up at nine. In fact, now it's it's already 10.30. So it's, it's damn late. But I mean, look at this. Isn't this a privilege? I think it's a privilege. It's fantastic to have this at your disposal. On the other side, where the school is, the proper school, there is water and electricity. My power bank is charging. Speaking. And now I'm going to, to wash even my, my hair over there. This is not uh, what I would say stealing something or uh, using somebody else's water or electricity. Well, yes, this is what I'm doing. There is my phone charging. I'm gonna use their water. Um, however, we leave no trace. We we want to keep it simple. Traveling by bike is um, is a display of minimalism, and um, we try to do the best of the few resources that we have with us, within our bags and in and around us. If you combine this with cycling, you understand that to be good or fast in bike touring is not only about making miles, it's a combination of camping, bike packing, gears, logistic, and obviously cycling so don't think about us as only people that cycle a lot because there is a lot in the background that we do in the meantime still i don't know where i'm going you know what to do about this trip but it seems that this is becoming a test bike tour for a bigger event that i might do in a year's time like cycling in Europe in a in a in a big way <laughs> uh, so this is seems to be a set a test for my setup for myself and and my gears as I don't have now the time and the will to cycle the whole length of Europe in a way or the other uh, for the moment, uh, I started in Stockholm and tomorrow I might reach Germany, but overall, I don't think uh, this trip will continue that long, even though I don't know where I'm heading. So, uh, this sounds a little bit exciting, probably, to you, but uh, uh, yeah, it it's a kind of new thing for me. I'm cycling, but I don't, know, I don't know where I'm heading. What I know now is Hamburg, but I don't know then if I will turn to Berlin, Amsterdam or Poland. We will see. Day 10 might begin.
Traveling is about living on the move. It is a life at full speed, always outdoors. I live my life when bike touring, but every day in a different place. I wake up in one place, I get to see the evening in another. Unless for some reason you love the man-made agricultural landscape, there is no point in taking the extra time to cross the Danish islands. I wanted to tackle the place in a few days and push forward to Germany.